In this video, I'm going to speculate on how the animatronic mechanisms work in B2 EMO from the new Star Wars Andor, and also try to build my own version. There are no spoilers for the Andor series in this video, but obviously I'll be looking at the B2 droid in depth. B2 appears to be a practical effect rather than CGI. A real B2 was featured at the recent premieres of Andor and several influencers have posted footage on social media. As far as I can tell, this was built by the same team that built BB-8, which includes Josh Lee and Matt Denton. And you can see the BB-8 internal animatronics reveal from Star Wars Celebration 2016 in the Star Wars YouTube channel. At first, B2 doesn't look like anything special, it's just a beaten up looking salvage droid. During the Andor premiere, however, the first thing I noticed was that it had mechanum wheels, which makes it omnidirectional. I've done a few projects with standard omni wheels in my channel, but never mechanum wheels. These wheels have little wheels around their circumference which are angled at 45 degrees. Mirrored pairs are usually installed on the robot and depending on the combination of wheel rotation on each wheel, the robot can move in any direction. B2 is even more complicated than that though. Each foot can lift up and down independently and also the whole wheelbase can extend to make it longer and presumably more stable. There are also a number of other features in the body which can boost itself up to make the droid taller. There are rotating parts inside the body and the head can also move independently in multiple axes. And all of this is a real piece of engineering. So I made a simple CAD model to explore the drive mechanism of the droid. Each foot has a wheel which must have a motor for the mechanism wheels to work properly. Then each foot can slide up and down independently so the droid can lean in any direction or move its whole body up and down. So that's another four motors. Lastly, the wheelbase can extend, so that's probably another powered axis, although this could be achieved by just driving the back and front wheels in opposite directions and keeping them there by using wheel encoders to regulate the wheel velocities and positions so they don't creep as the droid drives around. Looking at the internals of BB-8 that were revealed and the size of the motors for the animatronic motions in that, such as the head, I'd guess that some expensive robotic servos are in use in B2, like the Dynamixels I've used in some previous projects, courtesy of Robotis. The sliding motions are probably servos like these in continuous position mode, driving lead screws and linear rails to move the axes. Then there would need to be some inverse kinematics going on to take into account the wheelbase length and the height of each foot to drive the droid's body to a specific angle in pitch and roll. This is really similar to my robot dog projects which can keep all of the feet planted on the ground while the body can rotate in both pitch and roll. I don't really want to build this with so many expensive servos though, because you can build almost anything with enough money. I've built quite a few Star Wars droids in the past, including my own BB-8 which used scrap windscreen wiper motors from cars, and those only cost £2 each, and my walking gonk droid which had a number of small cheap motors in it. So I'm going to look at an alternative approach to building B2 and achieving similar motions with budget parts. Mechanum wheels are quite readily available, although they tend to cost quite a bit even for moderately sized ones, let alone the big ones. So I decided I'd design and make my own with 3D printing. Each of my mechanum wheels is going to have 12 rollers around it, so we've got 12 rigid cores and 12 TPU tyres so we get some grip on the wheel. We've also got the two sides of the wheel to make and a couple of other bits and pieces. So just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. The hub or the two sides for this wheel are made in two sections which screw together and that gives us the complete wheel with axle holes so we can fit those rollers at 45 degrees. And the rollers have a rigid core, a TPU tyre and those just push fit together and you'll notice there's a slight raised part in the middle of the core so they grip. That of course spins on a 4mm piece of steel so it runs nice and smoothly and sticking 12 of those into one of the wheels gives us our mechanum wheel with 12 rollers all at 45 degrees, so I'm pretty happy with that. Thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings for this project, there's one of those on each side with an 8mm internal diameter, and I've put a drive pulley on here as well. And yes I remember to make mirrored pairs of these for each corner of the robot so that we can move just like the example earlier in the video. If I turn one of these on its own then it moves a bit like a screw so we get that sideways motion. And if you're in any doubt, here's some footage of B2 EMO moving sideways at the premiere and also rotating, so it's a truly omnidirectional robot. Moving on to the rest of the drive system, I'd really like to have the feet slide up and down just like the original. However, this would involve some quite compact actuators which will ultimately be costly. 
But then I remembered a previous build, the Pedrail Wheel Vehicle. This had wheels of feet which helps the machine climb over obstacles. I mounted four of these wheels on a chassis with four wheel drive and suspension which worked pretty well. As one wheel finds an obstacle it moves upwards and the whole thing averages itself out. There's no active control in that build but what about if we built a hybrid passive active suspension system? I've still got the chassis from that build, if I balance it on some rolls of tape we can see that it's pretty responsive to being pushed around which feels like quite a natural movement. If I take one piece of bungee cord off and lift that corner then the other suspension arms comply with wherever I put it only takes a little bit of force to move it around. So what about if we balance the droid on some suspension and then instead of needing powerful actuators that can lift the whole droid we use smaller cheaper actuators to coax it around. All of the wheels would comply with the ground so we don't need to calculate any complex inverse kinematics either. There is one issue here which is as the feet move up and down they'll get closer and further away from the body. However this distance is less than 3mm so it would be easy to ignore. And once each wheel is on suspension the back and front of the droid can slide on linear rails to extend the wheelbase. So it's time to get printing again to print each of the four feet for the droid, the suspension arms and also those central sections with that sliding core. For now I'm just going to build the drive mechanism and we'll come back to the rest of the body in a later video. So we've got two sides for those boxes for fitting the feet, those are the central parts which are eventually going to have linear rails sliding on V-wheels and also the suspension arms. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. Here's one side of my foot and the wheel slots in just like this onto some 8mm studding that's bolted onto each side to help hold the whole thing rigid. If I slide that foot around we can see that the mechanism wheel turns when I move it sideways and backwards and forwards and that explains how a combination of these motions makes the droid omnidirectional. For now I'm using some pretty small 6 volt motors with gear heads, I've used these in quite a few projects and there's quite a lot of choice out there for similar motors. So with a belt drive onto the mechanism wheel that seems to run ok, and I'm just running that on a 2S LiPo. And yes of course we need 4 of these with opposite pairs of mechanism wheels for the whole droid. But before we carry on with that it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor which is Onshape. Onshape is a cloud native Canon PDM platform built for business, created by the founders of SolidWorks because they saw that modern product developers still experience many challenges related to their CAD and PDM systems. Since Onshape was built from scratch in the cloud there are many unique advantages, like built in PDM and the GitHub inspired branch and merge model to test new ideas. Onshape is accessible across all operating systems and works like Google Docs, so an Onshape document is a single source of truth for your design data. Onshape is always growing, new releases are pushed to the product every 3 weeks to add new features and functionality. Recently Onshape added PCB Studio to connect ECAD and MCAD designs and they also just acquired a company called Cloud Milling which means CAM is coming to Onshape in early 2023. All of these updates happen over the air automatically which means your company will never have to manually deploy a CAD update ever again. Onshape also just released a connection feature with Arena PLM which synchronises engineers, manufacturers and suppliers enabling the instantaneous sharing of product design information at the click of a button. I highly recommend the engineers and product developers watching to consider using Onshape for their business and you can try it for free at onshape.pro slash James Bruton. Right let's get the rest of this together. The next parts we're going to look at are the central sections which slide on linear rails, so those have got V-slot rollers fitted in there and some 2040 V-slot extrusion that fits nicely in the middle and slides backwards and forwards. And then my suspension arms link all of those sections together. At the moment I'm just using some bungee cord as suspension springs but I'll need to replace that with proper springs in the future and as the mass of the droid builds up that'll need to be correctly rated. The four suspension arms allow the droid to lean backwards or forwards or left or right and or in any direction really, basically by moving any combination of those suspension arms and that gives me quite a lot of motion so I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out so far. And my sliding section allows the wheelbase to extend so that we can make it longer or shorter just like the real droid. The only problem with this is that the central piece doesn't stay in the middle, it slides up and down by itself which is going to cause a bit of a problem. It's impossible to match the friction between those two rollers perfectly on the two sliding pieces, so generally that middle piece will stick on one side. 
So to make sure it always stays in the middle, I've got a new piece fitted to another piece of 2040 extrusion, and that consists of a spur and two racks. And that means that it'll always pull out, and as the spur rotates, it'll keep that middle piece perfectly in the middle at all times, no matter what I do. So this seems like a good solution. There is one challenge that those racks are quite bendy and they might pop out of the gear, so to stop that happening, we've got another bracket that fits on, which is actually holding the servo that's going to move the suspension. And that constrains the racks in place, so they can't pop out from that spur gear in the middle, and they're held nice and rigidly. So that seems to be working pretty well. But now to get it working, we need to put some electronics in. For now, I'm using an Arduino Mega to control this, which has got enough I.O. for the servos and motors, although as we build the droid up, we're probably going to need something with some more pins on. As usual, I'm using the nrf 24 l one radio chip so I can use the OpenDog 3 remote to control this, but I'll probably build a custom controller in the future. And I'm using a USB boost bank to power the Arduino and a 2S LiPo to power all of the motors and servos. Each motor has a BTS7960 motor driver which is complete overkill but it'll be fine if I ever have to upgrade the motors. So the right hand stick on the remote makes the wheels go backwards and forwards as you'd expect as I push it backwards and forwards and also goes sideways using those mechanism wheels and we'll put it on the ground and demonstrate that in a moment. If I turn the stick, then it will turn on the spots by running the left and right wheels in opposite directions. And if I switch this switch on the remote and turn the other stick, then it drives the wheels in opposite directions backwards and forwards to extend the wheelbase. The servos I'm using here are high-tech HS805 BB Plus servos, which cost me about £30 each, so they're not too expensive. Obviously, there's four of those to operate each of the four suspension arms. And each one of those is attached with a piece of string, which goes slack, of course, if I push it manually. And that means if the droid goes over a bump, then it doesn't smash the servo to pieces, and that servo isn't directly supporting the load of the droid. So now if I switch that switch to the other position and turn that left-hand stick, instead of driving the back and front apart, it now pulls all of those servos down. I can also push the stick backwards and forwards and left and right to operate those servos in pairs and those numbers all mix together so I can do any combination of motions with rotation or moving the stick diagonally for instance. Whatever I do the chassis complies with the ground due to that bungee cord and the loose strings attached to the servos. Every stick axis has motion filtering on and I did a video about how to make robots move smoothly. These are just cheap servos and basically an Arduino Uno controlling this head. So check that video out. Basically, it just means that the value doesn't change too quick and that gives a lovely smooth motion so we get deceleration as we get towards the target. So it's time for some tests on the floor, driving backwards and forwards and driving left and right with those mechanism wheels, which is working pretty well, and rotating. And of course I can mix all of those motions together, at the moment I'm controlling all of this with the right hand stick, so it takes a bit of getting used to, normally I put the rotation on the left hand stick, but we need that for the other two functions and I really want to keep that separate. Yes, we can spread that chassis apart by driving the front and back wheels in opposite directions with our left hand stick, and that seems to work pretty well. Now there's no motor actually driving that independently and there's nothing to lock it in place, but it doesn't seem to creep too badly. The motors are just being driven with more or less current to vary the velocity. I could use the encoders which are actually built into them to drive the speeds precisely. And that would mean that it would perfectly stay with the chassis spread apart altogether. But for now that seems to work okay in current mode, so I'm pretty happy with that. So let's have a look at those servos, let's twist that left hand stick first of all so we can move the whole body up and down and we get about 70mm of travel. If I push the stick backwards and forwards then those servos operate in pairs so that we can bend backwards and forwards or we can lean sideways and that seems to be working okay. Obviously I can use both sticks at once and I might put some auto mixing on this so it always leans in the direction of travel. But well, that seems to be quite organic, especially with that motion filter. And of course that works sideways as well.
Having those sticks independent is quite useful because I can also bend away from the direction of travel just by doing that manually if I want to. So I'm really thinking about a custom controller here with some extra joysticks or some extra kind of thumb sticks or finger sticks as well as the two main joysticks so that I can control all the functions. Once the body's on and it extends up and down and the head's on, then we can have all sorts of things that I can't control by myself. So we're probably going to need some intelligent mixing to make some of those functions automatic. In terms of scale, my body width is going to end up being about 400mm, which I think is too narrow. And my feet are around 130mm wide, which I think is slightly too wide, considering there needs to be some cosmetics on the outside. Looking at pictures of it, it looks absolutely massive, so I'm probably going to boost those suspension arms out to make the body about the same size as R2-D2, which is about 470mm. As I mentioned a couple of times, I don't think this is exactly how they built the original with these suspension arms. I'm pretty sure they just had compact actuators to make the feet slide up and down and sorted out the inverse kinematics so everything was rigid. But this is kind of a budget way for droid builders to build it without lots of money because these servos are pretty cheap and so are these motors and the rest is 3D printed. So I am intending to finish this whole thing off, but I think that probably I want to watch some more of Andor the TV series. I've only watched the first three episodes at the moment. I am intending to build the body mechanics in a future video and then after that come back and do all the cosmetics and finish it off nicely. There is going to be some simplification because I don't think I can control everything with these two joysticks so either we need a fancier controller or we need some simplification and mixing. I'm pretty sure there's more than one person controlling the real one. So I am going to publish a Canon code as well for this eventually when I've sorted out the scale and I've built all of it and it all fits together. So for now that isn't published but it will be eventually and it will be open source for anyone to reproduce. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership then those links are in the description below and YouTube channel members and patrons can get access to all the videos up to a week early including sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. Alright that's all for now.